God, seriously, it looks like some ET quarantine operation up in here. And how is this not displacing my family and altering our daily lives? Power tools, chemicals, dirt and debris, all hazards about. Looks like they got the first two holes wrong. There's this saying, you know, measure once, cut. Hey, so much for hygiene or relieving yourself or uh, giving my baby a bath. Hole in the ceiling equals looking at Orion at night. And yes, mold. Ideal H environment and, uh, oh wait, this isn't the zip walls they said they were going to use. Here's our bedroom baby's room. Uh, all of my son, who is 18 months old, items are piled up. Construction has consumed the entire bedroom, rendering completely unusable for 15 business days over four weeks. Certainly unsafe environment for babies and adults. Hazardous tools, equipment, chemicals, action and movement of two to five construction workers. Added the dust, debris, fumes, airborne and agitated construction byproducts and noise, which all consumed the entire home. Here's an example of some of the mistakes they made in the room. This is uh, three holes that were attempted uh, and it took to cut the ventilation gas line shaft hole that leads directly outside. The saying measure twice cut once did not apply here. And the hallway from our room, baby's bedroom to the uh, bathroom, uh, like I said, not a safe environment for uh, family or children or babies. Have a look at that. And in the wall where they're doing construction, you can see mold. Good old mold. Hey, here's a little fact. Did you know that mold, once thought to be asexual, is actually sexual? It went through a sexual revolution in a way, and it can change its sexes depending on how it needs to reproduce. Of course, they covered this mold back up, and uh, out of sight, out of mind. And right above that mold, why not top it off with a bedroom observatory, a.k.a. hole in the ceiling? Let me tell you, Ryan's belt is wonderful and romantic from your bedroom ceiling for four weeks. All right, guys, we're in my bathroom, and this is generally how it looked for uh, 15 business days over four weeks. You know, usually I like privacy in the bathroom. You know, it's just my thing. As well, I do like to access my bathroom during the day. I prefer a clean bathroom without three to five men walking in, out, or positioned in, or directly outside of it working all day. Again, that's just me. But that's also, I think, my wife and children's thing as well. Here in my bathroom, the Villa's amical management and construction teams violated me on several occasions prior to their 9 a.m. start time. These incidents include walking in on me in the shower naked, while sitting on the toilet, and while standing in front of the toilet mid-pew with penis in hand. All laughed off, you know, funny, no big deal, you're a guy. What if this had been a woman? I think it'd been a different story. So for approximately four weeks when I wasn't using the bathroom at Starbucks, the gym, uh, or any other public facility, I would sneak in during the construction worker's lunch break at noon, and I would drop a hot one. My wife's going to be like, why did you add that? That was super mature. Um... I don't know. Our kitchen. This is what our kitchen looked like from about March 22nd to about April 6th, uh, about three weeks. Uh, the barrier and inability to access added with lack of running water or gas. I mean, how are we supposed to prepare our family's meals? I feed the baby Chipotle. I love Chipotle. No, wait a second. And on the fourth week, when we are finally able to access our kitchen a little bit, a razor blades uh, to step on and for my 18 month to potentially play with. Here's my dishwasher's vantage point of that uh, straight up looking prison shank razor blade. So what would the rest of your crib look like during that four week construction period? Well, right here. Uh, not really livable. There's no way that we weren't altered and adversely affected. I had no kitchen, bathroom, bedroom, no utilities, construction environment, and zero privacy. And uh, yeah, not, not what I'm paying the big bucks to live here for. And our balcony door. This was left open all day for weeks to air out the daily chemicals, fumes, and construction byproducts. This obviously is a safety risk to our 18-month-old son. Our loft is on the fourth floor. Uh, it's a high fall. It made regulating the temperature for our loft impossible while adding to the dust and debris, agitating construction byproducts, and facilitating added pollution to come in from the busy 6th and 3rd Street, which we're flanked by. Was it only your family that was affected by this construction displaced? Uh, no. Check it. Look at my neighbors. We were the only ones who decided to speak out in this fashion. So in terms of speaking out, that leaves us to feedback. Hey, 
We've seen recent online positive feedback regarding the villas and Amoco properties. Well, of course you do. Don't get it twisted. In anticipation and to circumvent potential negative feedback of the lengthy construction process, one lucky winner who posts positive feedback will win a $1,000 gift card. Now, did Amco really think that we wouldn't see the transparency behind this positive feedback incentive granted the situation? I mean, yeah, that totally deters from losing thousands of dollars via paying full rent during 15 business days of construction displacement. I'm all freaking in. Positive feedback all the way. <laughs> but wait, do you think my feedback counts as a sweepstake entry? I sure should hope so. All of this is just what I've been able to give feedback on given my time constraints. Uh, there's quite a bit more, of course, things like the pool. We all know that that's shut down under construction for the next few months, which is a huge amenity to us for living here. My wife and I have spoken with Villas Management on several occasions in order to rectify this without uh, any real action on their part. So let me tell you, uh, one of the last conversations my wife had, Christy, the manager, said, well, why aren't you down here with the other moms and their babies in the lobby? And you know, the the simple fact that you say babies and moms in the lobby is just not right. Babies and moms should not be in the lobby without proper amenities of feeding and bathroom and care and all this sort of thing. And, um, not cool. To close, the last time that I spoke with Amy Cole and the Villa's management, I said, why don't you just do the right thing? I totally get your corporate responsibility, reduction in liability, your profitability, uh, the things that you have commitments to regarding your job. I get that. But in the end of the day, why don't you just do the right thing? Why don't you make arrangements and compensate and treat us in the way that you would want your family to be treated or the way that you would treat your family? It's very simple. Okay, guys, thank you so much for uh, your time, for watching. Uh, I hope everything works out well for you guys, and uh, we'll see you around the building.